Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to listen up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies. All right, Ryan, what's in the mailbag today? Let's get right on down into it. Thanks to ESPN's Alexa Philippou for bringing us this news, Ryan. I believe it was released on Thursday. So we like to uh, expand the news a little bit into uh, a week or two ahead. So maybe Wednesday we'll be back on uh, with some more news. But let's get on down into this and see what you think. Ryan, a potential and everybody leave a like comment especially on this video and subscribe to the channel we appreciate it a potential one and done rule ryan in women's college basketball could ruin the game that's what gino Ariema said uconn head coach gino ryan and to get on down into further details ryan the current wnba rules according to this article the current wnba rules stipulate that players are eligible to be selected in the WNBA draft upon graduating from college or being within three months of doing so or in the calendar year that they turn 22. So, man, I think it just depends under the circumstances. But I'll let you go first, see what you think. I It, it could ruin it, but then again, we're living in a world today now where, not just in sports, but in general, I think you know what I mean, where it's 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 your way or the highway. Maybe I took it too far with that, but hey, you know that saying, Ryan. I, I don't know if a lot of rules apply to to our generation anymore, especially when you talk about free agency, when you talk about off season moves in sports, right? Strictly sports. I don't know. Do, do, do you think I'm headed the right direction or no? Well, you know, there's certainly a lot of things that are, are changing, and I, I guess with this generation and as uh, as the generations to come in the future, I guess things are going to continue to change, whether it's for the better or for the worse. But, uh, you know, in this case, and what Gino is saying, I, I'm going to have to completely agree with them. I, I do oh. think the one and done rule uh, would kill women's basketball if the players are able to to start leaving after their freshman seasons. And I love the reasoning Gino gave about the women's game growing. He said, uh, quote, to me, what helped the women's game grow is the people in Iowa got to grow up with Caitlin Clark. The people of Connecticut got to grow up with all of my great players. There's something to be said for that, end quote. And for me, I, I do feel like the bond that what these women's basketball fans share with these players is so special in the impact that the players can have by staying all four years in college. You just don't really have that on the men's side of the game. And the one and done rule, along with the transfer portal in the men's game, is kind of ruining it, in, in my opinion. Uh, now, the, the transfer portal for the women's side has gotten a little bit crazy the, the past couple of years especially, but I do believe the one thing that's kind of holding the game together is not having this one and done rule. And like Gino said, I, I really hope it doesn't change because if it does, I think we would be taking a step back again in the women's game. And I, I would just hate to see that because right now, in my opinion, the women's game is in the best spot it, it's probably ever been in. So uh, hopefully th this rule doesn't change because I just think we're, we're in such a great spot in the women's game. Uh, and I would I would really hate to see all these great players start leaving just after one season. Yeah, uh, you're right, and I definitely do appreciate your take on that. Uh, you know, yeah, it seems like I always bring up the name Paige Beckers, no matter what episode now we're going on. But I mean, I remember I recall about what five months ago a, a preview of her college of uh, this season uh, before prior to her starting coming back from that injury. Uh, before this past season started. And Paige Beckers, she said something around the fact that, she, you know, she used to take for granted. Well, I don't know about take for granted, but she used to just always lace up her shoes and she just wanted to go play basketball. But now since that injury, she takes care, you know, she, she, she takes care of the little things too, as well as the nutrition, her body, her sleep. Um, so I think that that's something that I just use that as an example, maybe, that's something that that and I'm not going to say oh, we don't want anybody to get injured. But if you experience an injury, uh, possibly let it happen in college. You never know when it's going to happen. But 
then you can take away, you know, you can learn, take away, uh, you know, some stuff that you didn't know before and, and let it, uh, develop and then carry it with you into your uh, professional career. If you get drafted, if you go professional, whether it's here in the country or overseas. So I think that's something that you could take away from this. Um, college is all about we talk about being in class but how about learning as far as the sport that you're playing i mean it's yeah. a learning process and i think that learning should specifically uh be in college while you're in school so i do agree i, I think that these ladies at least three years if not four um to develop and grow um and again like gino said uh for the women's game altogether i think because look Paige Becker's Caitlin Clark household names, Ryan, already, and they haven't stepped on the professional floor as of yet. Soon Clark will. But so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't. And, and you talk about the money factor. You could probably most likely what make more money in as a as a college athlete than you could in the WNBA. But that's a whole nother story. And we hope that changes soon. But yeah, Ryan, I just think what do you think about that? As far as, you know, the learning process, I think it's very important, too, because Paige, remember what she said in that video, Ryan, from ESPN, that that profile video. She said, you know, she doesn't want to play just five, 10 years. She wants like a 20 plus year career. So I think that along with that, you need to learn as you go on and not just go out there and say, hey, I'm just going to play basketball. That's it. And I think in terms of, of just UConn, I think Gino does such a good job of, of teaching all of these these players that he recruits. Uh, just just about the game and, and I guess about life too, but um, just specifically on the game, I think these players learn a lot from Gino, and I think if they're only able to stay one season, they definitely can't uh, learn as much as if they stay three or four. And I just think in general that that goes for just probably about every player if they leave after one season in, in terms of basketball uh, or what they're learning academically, they're probably not going to be able to. Uh, learn as much but uh, yeah the the money factor is definitely an interesting conversation and, and probably a, a whole separate uh, 20 minute podcast episode but uh, there's there's definitely a lot of players now both on the men's and women's side but specifically for the women I know there's definitely a lot now uh, since they can uh, make money off their image and likeness certainly a lot of them are making more than what they're they're making in the WNBA, which is uh, a very interesting conversation. But uh, yeah, I just think in, in terms of the one and done, I, I really hope we never see it in the women's game. All right. We appreciate everyone for coming through on the last video, Ryan. A lot of support, a lot of love for everyone. Let's go over to Jason D'Amico. He said, I've only been a Huskies fan for about five years. Well, I didn't realize that, Ryan. I thought it was a lot longer. So something to know. Gino drives me crazy sometimes, but his greatness is beyond reproach. I remember during a game when UConn was losing and time was getting short, Lou Lopez was fouled and Gino threw a water bottle on the court and refs called a technical foul, which sealed the deal for Notre Dame, I think. I was furious that Gino called him every name in the book and even said that his ego lost them the game until I watched the game again. When I saw how Lou Lopez was getting roughed up all game, roughed up, is an understatement, and the refs did nothing to stop it. I realized that Gino had no choice but to send a message not only at the refs, but to the league that his players were not being called fairly, and it was a game plan for opponents to play dirty, and he was right. At the cost of the game, he sent a message that backed his players up. He put his players before the scoreboard, and that hit home. That is a coach I want to play for. Peace. Well, I I do remember that scenario of, of Gino throwing the water yeah. bottle at, at the at, at the end of the bench. Um, yeah, he's definitely done that more than a couple of times. But I think, as Jason said, for for the most part, it, it is for good reason. And there's certainly been a lot of games, you know, throughout the three years that we've covered the team where. Um, there, there's a lot of people who feel like UConn's not, not really getting the same amount of calls, uh, or that the game isn't being called fairly for both teams. And I think, like Jason said, I think for Gino, he just wants the game to be called uh, fairly, and and his players to get the same calls as the opposing team. But uh, as I always say, I never want, I, I never want to be 
in the referee's shoes, but I think certainly uh, UConn does get you know, not not as many calls probably as the other team. We certainly saw it, uh, you know, more more times than we probably wanted to this season. Uh, but yeah, always got to love Gino and, and and some of his antics sometimes. Well, Lindsay Matthews, Ryan, we haven't heard from her in a while. Great to highlight her comments. I agree with you, Phil. Strategically, she was the answer, the only answer. I guess she's speaking about Paige, but that's UConn basketball, isn't it? Gino and staff prepare the players for the WNBA and for winning national championships with, uh, excuse me, not with, when a few players are down, they have players who can step up. And you know this, the players who come to UConn want this kind of situation. They love the pressure because that's when they can show us their best. It's not luck. In regard to your earlier comments about Gino, that brought tears to my eyes. I think our whole state will be in mourning for a long time when he passes, but his memory will inspire us for decades to come. Long live Gino. P.S. Did you see that 60,000 Connecticut fans showed up in Hartford last Saturday to celebrate the men's win? Who else, Ryan? Ryan guessed it again two years in a row. Men National Championship. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised by that. That is the, the fans showing up. We always know UConn Nation is, is going to be there no matter what. But yeah, Gino is certainly going to leave a, a lasting legacy probably forever uh, in terms of, of UConn women's basketball and, and probably just, just on the women's game in general. I think his his legacy on, on the game and for UConn is going to be uh you know, pro probably last forever. So, uh, yeah, it is it is pretty amazing what Gino's been able to do. And I think in terms of the, the players that come to UConn, there's so many great players that have stepped on the court, obviously. Uh, and, and there's some great players that probably haven't really gotten the, the chance to show off uh, some of their talents for UConn. But uh, I think, you know, when, when we have so many injuries and the players are able to step on the court, who don't get a lot of minutes and really show off their talents uh, in, in a really clutch situation. Uh, it really does show why uh, all these women do get recruited to UConn and, and why they're uh, all so talented when they uh, can step into a, a, re a really tough situation. Let's actually get back on topic. Tell me about this person, how much this means to us, Ryan. Tell us, <laughs> tell us about staying on topic today, how much this comment fits this video. If they change the rules to one and done, may shorten Gino's career. It would really be terrible if they do this. Well, welcome to the podcast today, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it probably would. They're, they're probably not wrong. I think, uh, obviously, from the article, Gino and, and all the comments that he said, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious that he's against it and it probably would I, I don't think he would probably he probably wouldn't stay around much longer if the rule does get changed but like you said that it's a rule that uh, the players themselves made so um, you know if if they do decide to change it I guess it, it would be on them but that that is a very good point we probably would see a, a shortened Gino uh, career at, a, at an early earlier absence and probably what Gino plans if the rule does get changed. How about this one, Ryan? Jeffrey Bandman6. You know, I can't leave him out. His comment, we can't forget, especially when you're on top of the world, right? You just can't forget. How's that song go, Ryan? Ba -ba 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 bad to the bone, you know, bad to the bone. Gino is a great coach, but don't take nothing away from South Carolina. Yeah, well, I mean, you certainly can. What what they've done the past couple of years is is pretty amazing. And, and the dynasty that Dawn Staley has built, um, has has been pretty fun to watch in, in terms of just being a women's basketball fan. But, uh, you know, the, they finally were able to do it this season, the, the perfect season, uh, what was pretty incredible to see. Uh, so, you, you know, you, you got to tip your hats in terms of uh, to Dawn Staley and, and the South Carolina Gamecocks. I can tell you who's one and done. Ryan and Phil is one and done. No more episodes today, Ryan. Phil and Rye. One, we'll call it the one and done podcast. I'm just kidding. It's the listen up podcast right here in Maryland. I'll see you on Wednesday, Ryan.